Hi everyone, welcome to the Goldfish Report. This is our weekly Drain the Swamp POTUS update with Kent Dunn. And uh, we have Kent with us. How are you, Kent? Oh, we're doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You know, I've got my cappuccino here as usual. It just keeps me going through the report. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, I got I got my cup of coffee. I'm I'm good to go, you know. Hey, let's do it. There you go. I wanted to first give a little shout out to some Facebook viewers that uh, we didn't mention last week because they um, they have linked me up on um, my personal page. So, um, and I, I usually don't use that when I'm doing my goldfish report, but I wanted to give a shout out to one of, you know, really, we have so many wonderful viewers, um, but Christopher from Brooklyn, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Christopher, for all your wonderful posts that you, um, that you sent to me. We have Vid over in Slovenia, who's always sending us stuff on chemtrails. We have people all over the world. We have our friend Luke in Bulgaria, who sends us things, um, messages. We have Ada. I don't know where she is, but you, she sends us, um, messages as well, uh, links, um, we have Paul, bless your heart, um, of course, Suzanne, and James, bless your heart for your lovely posts and your lovely messages, Rose, um, Barbara, Dawn, and of course, our, our blogger friend, Kwila Pele, who um, is really uh, one of the stories that we're going to talk about today is um, the obviously the Syria bombing, and Kwila Pele, we're going to feature one of his um videos, uh, he did some reverse speech analysis of um, the president's speech, and we have a lot to talk about. So um, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to our viewers, and I wanted to thank you so much. And again, thank to our supporters for um, helping support the Goldfish Report. And uh, one other message before we leave this topic of um, viewers is um, we do appreciate and we know that our, our viewers love making comments in our comment section of our videos and um, and it's there for you because we do this for you and we know that you like to make your comments and comment we hope that you comment more on the topics being discussed <laughs> really what goldfish report is about goldfish report is really about having a conversation about it and we may not always you know we, we might not always have the facts 100 percent we're researchers so we're fine we're looking for it like you are. Um, but what we're doing is having a conversation about it and talking about how we're reacting to it, how if, you know, the probability of it is how it's going to impact our life and, and, if it's, and if it's something that we need to change. And so it's worth having the conversation about. So I just wanted to remind our viewers to be respectful in our comments section um, and not to monopolize it either because that's, you know, not letting everybody have their um, um, point of view. But let me just say one last thing. Um, you know, Kent is entitled to his opinion about, he has his own personal views, and, and I'm certainly entitled to mine. And I, just so that viewers are aware, I do have a multi-ethnic um, family. And so to try to come on to our, our comment section and, and try to in any way claim that Goldfish Report is racist or try to provoke the provocateurs who have come in, you're going to be deleted and, and you're going to be reported to... Um, to Google and you already have been. So um, take your hate out of our comment section because you're not welcome there, okay? Um, so you have been removed and you have been reported and anybody who wants to come in, and we do reserve the right to remove anybody for any reason, it's our site. Um, but we welcome, you know, certainly dialogue about the topics we talk about. But attacking other people is, is a waste of time because everyone can have their own opinion. And you don't need to, you know, show somebody where they're wrong, it, you know, over and over and over again. I mean, you know, it, that's not the point of the comment section. It's to comment on the topics being discussed and how they impact you and not to show other people that you're right and that you have something to prove. Um, and the 99% of the people who comment on our videos are just the most loving, wonderful people. And I'm keeping it up for you. And there's like this, all of a sudden, a few stragglers who have come in to cause trouble and to start um, start uh, trying to dominate. But we are watching it very carefully, and you're not going to get away with it. So please be respectful, or because um, uh, just the people who are truly interested in the topics we're discussing um, to benefit humanity are welcome to post in our in our comment section. So Kent, I know you've had to go in there. And you've had to uh, clean up a few things. Did you have any comments you wanted to make about the comment section? Because it is part of our reports. Oh, you know, I don't. You know what? 
being from the South and everything, you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, people, they take the wrong idea of what, what people from the South are really like, you know, they, they think we're all, we think, they think we're all <laughs> racist and, you know, we're, uh, you know, tobacco chewing and all this other stuff, which is the farthest thing from the truth. I mean, my best friend is black, you know, we call him Bubba, you know, Bubba's real name is Buddy. Okay. His real name is Buddy. I was telling him, I was telling him about one of the comments that was made on there. He said, well, maybe they need to just come down here and work with us for a day and see, see if color really matters at the end of the day. I said, boy, you got that right. Well, and it doesn't. I mean, you know, we're all beautiful souls, whatever color you are. I mean, I was a makeup artist and I can tell you how much I love skin and different colors of skin and how amazing it was for me to learn. Um, and just, you know, to appreciate, um, all the variety that humanity is and we love everybody um well actually we don't have to love everybody we don't love all the people that come in and we don't love the provocateurs i don't have to love everybody so i love most people <laughs> all right kent how's that yeah, that sounds good to me now we got recording today because big daddy was pushing us along he really wanted to get goldfish report started because you and i were chit-chatting for a few minutes before we got started so um hopefully he's happy staying quiet um well, let's get started. I mean, obviously, the big news, and sorry to, you know, belabor getting to this, folks, but we had to make those um, announcements up front, um, is obviously this um, attack on Syria, and this is really significant. We have Russia responding. We have, you know, what, though, Ken, I'll be honest, it almost seems like, um, you know, the world's a stage and everyone's playing a role, so to speak. It almost seems kind of like something doesn't seem right with this. Do you want to tell us what you, what do you know about this? Well, you know, Here's what it was, okay? Trump was there with Xi Jinping from China down at the Southern White House down in Mar Largo, Florida, okay? And I guess I guess for some reason he had to show off or something, you know. But what y'all don't know is he warned them ahead of time that he was going to be bombing that airfield. Now it was an empty airfield, okay? So Russia had time to move their stuff and everything, and we bombed an empty airfield because, like, you know, like they said, you know, you can't let gassing uh, innocent civilians go. You know, you got to do something about this, you know. And what did he do? He took out an air base. You know, what's the next step going to be? Well, I don't know what the next step's going to be because the next step ain't been moved yet, you know. Ain't nobody made that move yet. But if it does, you know, I'm pretty sure they're going to start losing some stuff. So, you know, a bunch of this, look, folks, this is just, this is just a big thing to take your mind off of what the real, you know, question is. And what's the real question? Well, I know what it is. Well, what can, let's talk about that a little bit because it, it seems like, um, you know, there's an awful lot of reports that I've been reading, um, and I think, you know, we've discussed this about the new republic being announced and that there needs to be, um, and of course, this um, global currency reset, and there needs to be some kind of distraction, so to speak, from uh, all that going on, that, that um, there's big changes coming, and most people don't see it. And this might be just a, a play at hand, you know, of cards here, so to speak, to um, to set the stage for really kind of, in a strange way, ushering in a very positive change, but, but a change that might be a little bit shocking for people and maybe, um, you know, have to, it kind of almost had to happen this way. Do you see, you know what I'm getting at? Oh, yeah. I know exactly what you're getting at. I mean, you know, if you think Xi Jinping came over here just to have uh, dinner with Trump, you know, he also brought along the uh, the uh, royal, he, the, well, the Chinese dragon's accountants came with him, okay? And he brought over the republic and, you know, to give the okay, to give the republic back to the people of the United States, you know, to bring in the algorithm for the gold to be given out, you know, to give the okay to release the U new United States notes. See, folks, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes y'all don't know, okay? And what they're doing 
is they're trying to distract you so they can get all this done. Okay? And you all need to know this. It does seem like the dog and pony show, though. I mean, because most of business gets done without the watchful eyes of the public. And so we just get to see the dog and pony show. Um, and you mentioned something about um, Xi Jinping, who uh, has been here. Uh, there was obviously um, some explosion not far from mar lago right before he arrived. Was that sending, who was that really? Or do you know if that was just a coincidence or was that someone trying to send a message, trying to stop this or thwart this um, rollout? Oh, oh, you're talking about when they blew up all the apple trucks? Right, that the apples spontaneously <laughs> combusted. <laughs> Is that what happened? The apples spontaneously combusted? <laughs> Listen, folks, apples don't spontaneously combust, okay? What that, what that was, that was the dark government. What that was was the dark government trying to disrupt the meeting. They thought they were going to disrupt the meeting. They didn't get to do it, okay? So what they did, they sent in people, and they blew up the apple factory, which was just up the road where Trump was going to be going into mar lago and, you know, where Xi Jinping would be going into, and they thought they could cause some disruption, you know? You're not going to stop this, okay? They want to stop this so bad. They all want to stop this, but you're not going to stop it, folks. You might as well just get used to it. It's coming, okay? We're, gonna, we're having a new world, a new set of government coming in, and no matter how bad the cabal want it stopped, it's not going to stop. Well, it's it's kind of interesting timing because um, this new world and all of a sudden we have people talking on the internet about, you know, suddenly the arrival of the Antichrist is here. But we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, what I wanted to ask you about was there was some uh, another report about um, Xi Jinping and his um, uh, entourage uh, has actually gone to um, Alaska to review some uh, natural resources there. Yeah, natural gas sources in uh, Alaska, and that's part of the uh, that's part of the agreement to China. So you know this could okay. be. This. So this is like asset recuperation for the bankruptcy of the USA Corporation. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, because. Uh, when the Republic is announced, if in fact, you know, I don't really, I haven't seen any of these documents myself, but, you know, this is what, these are what the reports are. If the Republic is rolled out, then, um, then the United States of America, the Republic, does not have that or does not own that debt any longer. That debt, that our national debt is zeroed out because the debt was accrued under the corporation, which most people didn't know anything about. When the Pope came over, um, he appointed, this is what the theory is, I don't know this for sure, but, you know, can't you comment on this? He appointed Paul Ryan to take over uh, because the Pope no longer uh, held us in, um, uh, as collateral for the debt. Is that, cor is that correct? The, 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 the people have been, by virtue of our birth certificates, been collateralized because of this right. debt that we owed, okay? So, yeah, right. nobody knew this. Um, you know, and of course, the Trading with the Enemy Act and the um, Glass-Steagall Act of 1970 or 1933. Um, if you do some research on that, you could you could find it in there. Um, so what you're saying, so so Kent, what what is this? Um, so what we have is some evidence. Why did the Pope come over? So the Pope had a few things to do when he came over, and now the consequences of now the latter part of that is coming to fruition now you're saying trump's going to be resigning soon that paul ryan's going to take over can you go into that in more detail well trump will be resigning at the end of the, this month out of, out of a scandal um do you want me to tell what the scandal is well i mean he you know honestly i mean Acting without Congress is kind of, you know, unconstitutional and perhaps illegal, even if, you know, Xi Jinping is here and, you know, he didn't, we weren't, we weren't personally threatened. We shouldn't have gone to war. Uh, that, that might be part of it, but you go ahead. All right. I'll tell you exactly why, I'll tell you exactly why Trump uh, went over there and launched. The CIA and the dark government has claimed, okay, I, I don't know anything about it, but this is what my intel sources are telling me, that they have Trump on picture having sex with a 13-year-old girl, okay? 
and Trump was to either do this attack or they was going to release it to the public. So y'all take it from there. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it seems hey, like, I'm just, it seems like exactly. whole, but, but it seems like this whole pedophile thing is every single, you know, it was deliberately set up to blackmail every single leader into somebody's ultimate agenda. It's very concerning. All of this is very concerning. Well, you know, Jeffrey Epstein's island was, you know, had cameras over there set up by the Mossad. They got everybody over there. Anybody that visited that island, they, they, they either drug, put drugs into them or they drugged their drink and, to get them knocked out. And then they had them young girls, you know, going into their room and, you know, uh, having nude photos with them. And they'd strip them down, you know, either nude or down to their bloomers or whatever, you know. And then they took these pictures and they had all of this evidence on tape. And this is why... The Israeli Mossad has been blackmailing the United States government because everybody's been over on that island. Well, shame on them for going. Shame on them for going. They know well, what's going on there. Well, listen, here's the thing about it. I wouldn't okay? be anywhere near some place like that. I, I understand that, but, it, but if they there? don't get you, you have to understand, when you're dealing with politicians, you're dealing with greed, okay? I mean, you know... Rob Peter to pay Paul type thing, you know, except the problem is, is whenever you rob Peter, it, it's Peter public is who it is. Okay. Right. And Paul, you know, Paul is just the old boy that's standing on the side and saying, Hey, you need to go over there and rob Peter a little bit more, you know? I mean, but Hey, that that's, this is the way it works, folks. I mean, the, the rich look, the rich think they can do everything and get away with it. And there's always somebody out there that's going to catch you and they're going to hold it over your head. So if you don't do stuff like that, then you don't have to worry about it. Well, you know, um, I, I, as I hear you talking, it, it's, it's, um, you know, it's almost as if you're talking about this next um, aspect of the story that, we're going to talk about and that's really kind of what's going on with uh there's a lot of reports about uh jared kushner the um son-in-law to president trump finding his way in really interesting positions he was in iraq this week there was a report he was escorted by uh, dunford i believe general dunford um really he's not uh god doesn't have a background in policy at all he um is a business person um uh He's uh, not somebody we know enough about. He's not a bureaucrat, so he's not a lifelong um, uh, public servant. So there's, it's almost like you know, we really should know a little bit more about the agenda and the personal beliefs of the people who are surrounding and advising our president. Um, I don't really have a problem with it being a family member, but I do have a problem not knowing anything about the person if they've not been elected, they've not been appointed in a public um, confirmation hearing, or they have not been a public servant their whole life. So um, my concern is that, you know, uh, what exactly was he doing um, on behalf of the American people in this kind of uh, relationship, um, Kent? Well, I can tell you what he was doing over in Iraq, if you want to know. Trump had, Trump had 26 pallets full of dinars, okay? And they had to use a military cargo plane to load the 26 pallets of dinars up. And Kushner and General Dunford went over there and met with a body and within a four-hour period while uh, Trump's dinars was getting cashed in for the GCR, okay? And they was only there four hours, and then they had to get back on the plane, and they had to get over here so he could be around whenever Xi Jinping's people got here. So this is what the deal is about that. But the reason they went over there is because they cashed in uh, Trump's 26 pallets full of dinar. I don't... Well, the official story was that he was there surveying the, um, um, I guess, the 
the the borders or they were he was surveying the um it looked like Mosul there there's reports that Mosul is almost completely liberated at this point and that the country I guess if they had their RV their their country has been um reassigned so, as the sovereign um country is that right Kent Right, exactly. So their sovereignty has been restored, uh, which is really great for Iraq and the Iraqi people. Um, and, um, and, and I guess the reason why your comment, um, you know, I connected this was I had seen a report about how um, Jared Kushner's father, Charles, um, you know, was um, uh, indicted and uh, sentenced and is in prison for um, – for uh what some some crimes some felonies and um and i and i think he felt he was on his way to law school and i think he felt um disheartened by how the prosecutors um prosecuted his father i mean if it's a crime it's a crime people you can't get off because you're you're you know unfortunately justice is for sale in this country I mean, that's that's what i've seen firsthand <laughs> you know it's it's beyond an opinion i mean i've seen it factually um uh it's not always this way uh but it it can be for sale that that if you have the right um group of corrupted officials uh unfortunately. But it seems like Governor Christie uh, from New Jersey was involved in that somehow. And little by little, we're noticing how when President Trump is, you know, um, he put this group of advisors together. And, you know, I think what happened was, you know, Jared um, did not like Governor Christie and held a grudge for him uh, going after his father. Um, and this is what was reported. I'm not telling you this firsthand. I don't have firsthand knowledge of this. I'm really kind of re, re, retelling a report that I had read or, and heard uh, in a video regarding uh, Jared Kushner. And so, and so it seems like there has been this payback. There has been this, you know, venging of, you know, it's like, but if your father committed a crime, you know, why are you avenging? It's like, you know, why are you avenging some, we were supposed to, you know, prosecute people who commit crimes that's the way it's supposed to work here but you know when you're up in the upper echelon of billionaire it kind of you know you feel so disconnected and so you know i guess beyond reproach i suppose you know like the laws don't apply to people over a certain um salary number is that is that um what you're what you're talking about with the yeah yeah you know when you got people that are billionaires listen i talk to bankers i talk to people that have money you know, and the difference between a millionaire doing what he does is one thing, but a billionaire, people like Trump and Kushner and all the rest and uh, rest of them folks, they have to walk that red line of right and wrong. And they have to stay on that red line because they've got all this money and, you know, they can be a boy genius today, but if they lose that money, you know, they're a blithering idiot the next day. So they have, they always have to walk that red line of right and wrong. So it looks like um, Kushner was instrumental in making sure Christie was not part of the, um, um, the Trump cabinet. Um, also, uh, it seems like since he was there, he also did not like um, Stephen Bannon, this chief strategist that uh, Trump had put in and got rid of him as well. It seems like, um, you know, uh, because it's family, that's where the conflict of interest comes in. And that's why you can't, you know, I mean, Trump is, you know, really the, I mean, he's the king of the apprentice, you know what I mean? He, he, he's the one who made your fired, you know, a famous term uh, in that regard in a popular way. And, but can he say that to his son-in-law? That's why you shouldn't have relatives working in places like that. If it came to that, can he do it? If he needed to, could he do it? That's why it's a bad idea to have family working as in the office with the, with the president at that level. It's a bad idea because um, you have to still be able to say you're fired. And what had happened was uh, it looks like Kushner had brokered some deal uh, to, for a meeting between the president of Mexico and President Trump, which President Trump ended up canceling, and apparently, and this is just a report, so I don't know this firsthand, but apparently Kushner was furious with Trump, and it seems like um, 
there might be some uh, uh, you know issues that may come about this. This is why we can't you know have the you know it, it's it's one thing if we don't we don't even know what this person's agenda is and that's a concern um and ivanka herself i mean they may be well intended but we need to know you know as anybody else would be vetted for the job american people should if they really want to talk about transparency american people should know what their what their goal is and what their objectives are and they should make that public what do you think kent right i totally agree with that but you have to understand the president's executive staff is there at the leisure of the president. In other words, he can hire you for one day and he can fire you tomorrow if he wants to. He has that right to do that. But you're all going to have to keep an eye on Jared uh, Kirshner, okay? You're going to keep an eye. Now, listen. Now, I'm giving you all a hint here. Wake up. Keep an eye on him. He's Jewish, he's around 35 years old, and he has an agenda. All right? You all three, you all remember them three things. He's Jewish, he's 35 years old, and he has an agenda. All right, now we're not just singling him out because he's Jewish. There's other aspects here. I mean, we're not anti-Semites. Um, my closest friend is Jewish. My best friends in life have been Jewish. Because Italians and Jews have always lived close in community together. <laughs> and so this is not about, you know, being an anti-Semite whatsoever, okay? Absolutely it's, it's about not. a combination. I mean, Gary Larrabee was on with us last time talking about the fake Jews, the Khazarians versus the real Jews. So there is a separation. There is some deception going on here. So even, and in fact, I saw a report where there were these Orthodox Jews in, in, um, in Brooklyn protesting um, this whole concept, once they start to realize that the fake Jews are the Khazarian Jews, it was never covered in the media. Completely blacked out. Of course, because because the cabal are nothing but the Khazarians. They are the false Jews. They are not real Jews. Period. They are from Khazaria. And the history behind that is, when the Khazarian Empire started, they were people of mercenaries. They were rented out to other countries to fight wars for other kings. Not just, not for their country, but for other countries, okay? And they made their self over into the Middle East and over into uh, Egypt and over there, and that's where they got themselves all set up. But listen, folks, these, these Khazarians are the fake Jews, and this is what I'm trying. This is what I'm trying to get you all to understand. It's not that I'm against the Jewish people. I'm trying to show you that the Khazarians are not Jewish. And you, the three things that I told you about, you all keep that in mind. Now, what does that remind you of? And Gary Larrabee was on last week talking about it. Right. Um, so. I, I, I think what's a little bit concerning is that one of the buildings he purchased in New York City, we're talking about Kushner, is 666 building on Fifth Avenue. I mean, who, right. would, who would want to, he supposedly paid the most money for um, that building. That was the most money paid for a building in New York City when he purchased it. Um, well, do you think maybe there's agenda behind that? Um, it's It's a little bit freaky. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, especially as a as a Jew, if he was a real Jew, would he really buy a six 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 building? I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. He says, his, you know, the report did say that his family came. You know, his grandparents were survivors of the Holocaust. Um, that's that's what he claims. Um, and he, you know, has a big family. Um, I, I don't know. I just think that, you know, this is a person who, if he's an advisor, what kind of official role? And, and I think there's a lot of people out there questioning this. Um, and I'm just kind of, you know, trying to take the, um, so to speak, uh, you know, take the temperature so of all these people. And they're all kind of concerned. You know, it's running a little high <laughs> in terms of the, the, the temperature of the, you know, it's like it's, it's going in fever pitch because, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, questions. Um, and, and quite honestly, I mean, he's getting access to top world leaders. I'm going to screen share um, our Goldfish Report news page. 
Um, and here's a photo. It's a really lovely photo, though. We have Ivanka and we have uh, Jared and we have their ch two of their children here reciting uh, traditional Chinese poems and songs for um, uh, Xi Jinping and, uh, and his wife. Um, and it's really beautiful. Uh, but here he has access, and so does Ivanka, to top world leaders. He also, Trump also requested uh, what presidential, um, let's see, what is it, security briefings are um, in, intelligence briefings are only for certain individuals within the president's um, uh, cabinet. Isn't that right, Kent? Right. The executive, the executive branch, yes. Okay, so there's only certain individuals that usually get or who are privy to that intelligence briefing. And he's requested that Jared be in on that as well. Folks, this, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not against, you know, that I'm not against um, the president. Um, and I, you know, I'm not singing Kumbaya either. I mean, we're here to hold his feet to the fire. Um, keep him um, to his word. Um, which we have a little issue about, I'm going to show you in a minute. But this is, a, this is troubling to see that these people have this access to world leaders who are not uh, in, you know, they're not political people. They are not part of the, they're not public servants. Um, they haven't been public, they have, they're not bureaucrats. Um, they haven't spent a lifetime. It's like there's people who have been, spent lifetime in public service who would love to have the opportunity to be there and who aren't there. So um, I understand this, this is, they have access, but should they? That's the question I have, should they? And um, it's, it's, it just seems like at, at a point where our country really is, there's a lot of people suffering, there's a lot of corruption, there's a lot of that. I don't think we should really be, you know, um, taking advantage of those kinds of opportunities because there is a, um, an appearance of impropriety. What do you think about that, Kent? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, there's you know, this does not. This does not look good. I mean, I mean, this is no better than you know. I tell you what. This this is starting to look. This is starting to look like Barnum and Bailey's again. You know. I mean, this is a. Listen, if Obama two point I mean, let's not let it get to that area, folks. I'm telling you. Wow. Right. Well, you know, um, not to overshadow uh, the fact that, um, well, here, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm going to screen share this other thing is when we say we want to hold his feet to the fire, we do have to kind of bring up some important issues and why he, you know, and publicly has kind of done a 180 on Syria. And what we see here is, this is, of course, on our Goldfish Report Facebook page. Um, here we have all of his tweets talking about a bombing of Syria of debt long term needs congressional approval in that one in that tweet. This one is doesn't have our national interest at heart. Stay out of Syria. Trump is tweeting this himself. Um, uh, not uh, do not attack Syria. If you do, many bad things will happen. These are Trump's own tweets. This is a problem, people. This is a problem. See, here's what the big. If y'all want to know what what the big deal is about Syria. All right, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. The portals that lead to the future and into space are over in Syria. Okay, you all need to know that they are over there, they are guarding them portals because there's things coming to this earth that you folks don't know nothing about, and they're coming through them portals that are in Syria right now. And if that's the reason why the United States has 10,000 troops on the ground in Syria blocking them portals, watching what comes out of them portals. Because folks, what's coming through them portals ain't good, okay? You have to understand, we live in a magical world that we have been told nothing about, okay? This world is not what you think it is, okay? The earth is not what you think it is. The moon's not what you think it is. 
But all this is going to be, this is all going to be part of disclosure. Just before we get off, um, before we forget about this, we do want to say and, and, and acknowledge that um, Supreme Court, uh, well, Neil Gorsuch was confirmed to the Supreme Court. Here's a, a photo um, and here's a story about his confirmation. Um, sorry to just change subjects about that, but it was part of our report today. And since we came, uh, uh, came upon it, it was a good time to just mention that. Um, um, but yeah, Kent, um, you know, the Bible does talk about, um, you know, these kind of, it's almost like coded, it's like coded messages. And here we have uh, Snowden talking about um, UFO events will leave you speechless. So he's talking about things that may be coming. Um, this has never happened till now. So folks, please go to our Goldfish Report Facebook page and check out these stories that we have here um, that are going to much more detail than what we're talking about. Um, Trey Gowdy is definitely, um, you know, wants to prosecute Hillary Clinton, get her in, in jail. Um, we have, you know, Dan Scavino Jr. He's the um, director of social media at the White House. We have to give a, a shout out to Dan and tell him what a great job he's doing. Document, being a photojournalistic, he's kind of documenting the Trump presidency photojournalistically, and he's got great pictures. He's doing a great job. He's kind of like the fly on the wall. and gives us all kind of a view of what's it like just kind of being there, just being there. You know, not being part of it, but being there and just kind of experiencing it. So um, he's doing a great job showing us pictures of that. Um, and I wanted to acknowledge that. And, uh, you know, can, can you see this? <laughs> no. You, see no. You, can't, you can't see the screenshot? No, man. I'm, fro I'm froze up tighter than a polar bear in, in <laughs> North, in, uh, at the North Pole. Well, I'm just showing our Goldfish Report winner their best smile award for the week is this dog. <laughs> He's, oh lord here we go a, with the dog again <laughs> oh this is the best picture we have to lighten things up a little bit folks but honestly we like to just we have to throw in a little bit of laughter because we haven't heard from big daddy yet <laughs> yeah yeah well you know big daddy's kind of quiet you know i like to joke i like to joke as much <laughs> as anybody does and and i mean louisa will tell you you know there's things that we talk about after we quit recording. And I mean, you know, I mean, things go on and it just gets off. Like we just wander off behind the little animals, you know, I just with the conversations and it just goes wherever we lead it to. You know, it's just, I tell you, y'all really should listen to some of it. It's it, it really funny. It's, it really it's hysterical that we, we have a good time. And, you know, that's, that's what, you know, it's important that we try to balance this out because energetically, these are really heavy and serious topics. And um, I think in the end, if, if it, it the, I guess the approach that we take is that, you know, we are each here individually, we still have to have our own individual experience. And regardless of these bigger things that are going on, and I know somebody made a post on our comment section. And, and like I'm saying, I can't control what's going on, I can meditate about it, but I don't have control over what's going on in Syria. But I can control myself and how I respond to it, how I react to it. And, you know, again, it's all about perspective and, and keeping your, you know, trying to keep perspective. Isn't that right, Kent? Right, exactly. You know, look, you know, there's things that's going to happen in this world that me, Lisa, you, you know, your relatives have no control of, okay? So, you know, we just got to roll with the punches, folks. We've been rolling with the punches all these years, right. you know, and it's coming close. It's coming close to, you know, a new government, a new everything. Just roll a little bit longer with it, okay? That, that's all we want you to do. We're just trying to wake you up. We're trying to show you what's coming. We're trying to get you to listen to us, read between the lines, and let us bring to you things that you won't hear anywhere else. Yeah, and, and this isn't about fear. I mean, it's really kind of, I think, Kent and I are at a place where we deal with this stuff, and trust me, there's some stuff we can't talk about still. Um, but I'm not in a place of fear. No matter what is reported, no matter what information comes across our way, you know, there's no fear serves no purpose at all. So there's no fear, right, Kent? We're not trying to engender fear here at all. Oh, absolutely not. I, you know, you know, there, there's no fear here. Okay, 
Yeah. All we're bringing you is truth. Okay. Um, you know. Yeah. If we were, we, we, we are on the same page that way, Kent. I think that's what makes us able to work well together is that we're not, regardless of what comes across our, our desk and we get crazy stuff. Let me tell you it, you know, some of it's not even fit to talk, really talk about, but um, there, there's no fear. I mean, we're all playing a role here. This is a time of change and we're all playing our part and our viewers are playing their part. I mean, I have wonderful people sending links to stories that they, you know, they want to contribute. Like everybody feels like they want to do their part, no matter, even if it's a small part or they think it's small, it may not be as small as they think it, it may be more significant. So, you know, the best thing you could do is find, you know, your own purpose here, find what that is and, and follow that. Right. Right, Kent? Right. Exactly. And, you know, when you send in a story, you may find a story that we don't have. Yeah. And you may be able to put the link in the chain that tells the whole story. So y'all don't hesitate, you know, to send us um you know, stories and stuff like that. And if we can link this, all the stories together, that just makes it better on y'all because then we can bring it to you. You know, the we can just bring it to you straight on. Now, look, I, I have to go back to this story for a minute. Um, I mean, we're not going to get away from Syria, sorry. But um, uh, I have... I saw a report by We Are Change, and I love Luke Radowski. I really do. Um, but he's saying this is a proxy war between U.S. and Russia. What's going on in Syria? I mean, do you see it that way? No, I don't. Because you know what? Look, but look, this is all this is all mind games. Okay, mm. this is China, the United States, and Russia trying to bring in the United States Republic, and they're trying to keep you folks busy in the mind, okay? They want you to get your mind off of what's coming, let them bring in the government, bring in the new money, get this gold, do the RVGCR, and they want you to keep your mind busy on things like what went off down in mar largo what's happening in Syria, what's going on in Israel. You know, they don't want you to see. That's why we tell you we want you to read between the lines, folks. Mm. We're trying to bring you the answers to the questions when we can't give you the question. All right. Well, what, what about um, uh, we have some new uh, executive orders. We have um, House Resolution 37 and 44, which pertain to the Bureau of Land Management. Um, how basically they, to eliminate these federal power grabs, uh, these land grabs uh, took control of land use decisions away from the states and local governments. So that's a good, I think that's a good uh, choice that uh, uh, the president made uh, was to give the control back to the states about how they're using their land. We think right. about that, Kent. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, this is the Bundy Ranch and mm -hmm. Lavoie, this with, Trump signing this, Lavoie Finnicum did not die in vain, okay? Lavoie Finnicum, and if your family is listening to us, we love you. Thank you for what you did. We appreciate you, sir. Even though the man died, Lavoie's death did not go unnoticed. Oh, no, and his Trump, name. Yeah. And Trump, when Trump signed that BLM order, he it proved right there that Lavoy Finnicum did not die in vain. Uh, so that was one. And we also had the, um, the house resolution 57 and 58, which was also uh, uh, this executive order that was signed, um, which deals with the state and local tax school systems, the tax, the taxation and um, it eliminates uh, the certain tax burdens on the state um, and really putting the decisions for this in, this, in the, the school district's hands regarding how to best educate their children in their districts and things of that nature. I mean, this is really consistent with what Trump has said in the past about less go big government and really giving more control to the states. Um, so that's consistent, although his <laughs> tweets on Syria and then his actions are totally not consistent. However, you know, his comment was when Obama had said he drew the red line in the sand 
and when Syria supposedly crossed it, uh, he did nothing about it. Um, Trump is trying to say, you know, he's he's he walks the walk. In other words, you know, although he right. he didn't really. It looked like that airstrip was, you know, vacant. That there may have been a few stray um, missiles that might have targeted certain rebels there, or something of that nature. Um, which, you know, were the ones responsible. I mean, is that what you're saying, Kent? Who was responsible for, or was it a false flag? Did these sarin gas attacks actually happen? And if they did, who did it? The rebels. The rebels are the ones that did it. You have to understand, you have to understand, we shipped a bunch of chemical weapons to Syria, all right? They got rid of a bunch of them, but a, but a bunch of them were kept. And it was the people that the United States are backing over there that let off that, that gas attack. If you tell me that Assad did it against his own people, I ain't no more going to believe that than I can fly the moon with a backpack. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Ron. Yeah, Ron Paul was out talking and about. Don't, how and don't you that. find it? And don't you find it just the least little bit interesting that uh, John McCain one month ago went over there to talk to the rebels in Syria? Don't you all find that the least little bit interesting that he was there one month before this sarin gas attack went off? But there was a report about something about Hillary Clinton having something to do with this as well. Is that is that accurate? Do you know anything about that? Oh, uh, you know what? Hillary Hillary involved in everything. Is, yeah, Hillary's involved in everything. I mean, she she was even you know she was on the uh, vessel you know driving the boat whenever uh, Obama got busted with all them drugs. Didn't you know that? She was the captain. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> the captain I mean, on that boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, she was wearing a captain's hat and had that little thing in the back that flaps, you know? Oh, my her God. Flapper, her flapper. I guess that's what you call it. I don't know. But, it, look, you know what? Hillary is involved in everything. But I'm telling you, folks, Hillary died last year, okay? This is her double. Her double is Teresa Barnswell. And it's actually Hillary's half-sister, okay? And we the have- rest of them are clones. Yeah, I've definitely said that. And I think it's just something that, you know, again, I think that the time that we're in, I mean, there's there's going to be, there are some reports, and I don't know this firsthand. I just know what the reports are that I'm reading, probably the same reports our viewers are reading, um, is that there is going to be disclosure around the same time. So all these things are really kind of going to happen at the same time, which is going to make people a little bit freaky. I think this is why there might be some martial law for a certain time, only to kind of help keep people calm down, because these are going to be really shocking things all happening at once. Uh, why it all has to happen at once, I don't know, because it's just part, is this what's going to happen, um, Kent? Are all these things going to happen at once? Well, the RV yeah. with the president resigning, it's going to be a shock. I mean, it, we've you know, aside from Nixon, we've never had a president resign um, in our you know in our recent history, and it's going to be pretty shocking. And then you know to hear about the republic, you know, announcing the republic. Um, so so when they announce the republic, we're going to go back to the original constitution that we have. Is that correct? Well, we're going to go back to the constitution of 1789. They call it the, the fluid constitution. This is the one that, this is the one that was sold out of the American people hmm. that put us into a corporational government. Hmm. So we're going, we're going back to what they call the fluid constitution, which is of 1789. Because 1776, it wasn't actually signed. It, it wasn't, wasn't actually, actually signed, signed till 89. No, absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's why it's 1789. Cause I, I had heard that as well. Um, which, which takes it, is that going no, no one's talking about this, but does that take us out of admiralty law? What does that do? Oh yeah. It puts us back into natural law. Natural law. This is good, folks. I think we need to kind of get our research caps out and start investigating this because this is going to mean very different things for our. How is this going to change the judiciary? Oh, um, you know, we're going to go back to more or less law of the land. You know, as you know, don't steal, don't kill people. You know, everything. Everything is just going to go back to law of the land. 
And that's the way it ought to be in the first place. I mean, you know. Okay. Oh, this is going to be huge. I mean, this is huge. And of course, we're supposed to have, uh, Kent, we're supposed to have this glo global currency reset at the same time. You know, something that you had said before was about, you know, this concept of, of um, uh, people that are so wealthy, these millionaires, billionaires, which I've said before, is, you know, earlier too. I don't begrudge people with a lot of money whatsoever, but everybody should be um, held accountable for their actions, whether you have a lot of money or not. What about all these people who are going to be coming into this money with this global currency reset that have their currencies and they're going to exchange? Um, how can they avoid the pitfalls of, um, uh, elitism, I guess, is that what you would call it? <laughs> Thinking that you're special? I, I don't think you should have that money then if you can really, you're supposed to be helping humanity. It's not so you can become, you know, an elitist. <laughs> well, right. right, exactly. And and I want you to know, I have talked to, I have talked to my people and I have tried to explain this to many people. If you do not use this money that you're going to get to take care of your fellow human beings, this money is going to absolutely ruin your life. This, this, this money is either going to be a blessing to everybody or it's going to be your death. That's more or less what it boils down to. And you're referring to those who have currencies to redeem. You're not talking about everybody. Although there is there the money is supposed to be used to benefit ultimately benefit everybody not everybody's going to be the beneficiary uh, i mean i'm sorry everybody's supposed to be the beneficiary not everybody's going to be the grantor or the trustee of this money right those of us that are going to be the you know the trustees of this money you know we're the ones that's going to have all the headache okay because if you don't think with all this money comes the biggest responsibility in the world you're crazy all right. This is why before you cash in, if, if you're not right with your God, okay, that's going to be the biggest mistake you ever made in your life because you're going to need people to help you and you're going to need people from above you. You're going to need to meditate. You're going to need to pray. You're going to have to ask for help from above. What should I do next? Okay. Because if not, this is going to drive you absolutely insane. And there are going to be some people that cash this in that are going to be like lottery winners, okay? They're going to be dead broke in two years. Mm -hmm. I, you cannot believe the people I've talked to. People are talking about, oh, I want to go out, I want to buy a yacht. I want to go out and buy a $50,000 Mercedes Benz. I want to, you know, I want to live in a million dollar home and, you know, all this, and I'm like, hey, folks, that ain't, I'm not saying not to upgrade yourself, but what do you, what do you need with a, what do you need with a, a, a 10,000 square foot home for when it's just you, your wife and your dog? Yeah, it's about, it's about uh, the value you place on this and really where your heart is in humanity, I think. And what you're talking about, Kent, is an interesting conversation. And we're going to leave off on, you know, unless there was some other issue you wanted to talk about today. I mean, there were some other things, the whole Susan Rice, you know, scandal, the Condoleezza Rice visiting the White House. Um, or did you notice this? Go ahead. You notice there's too much rice in the White House. I don't yeah. know what's going on with that. Rice and right. Yeah, there's too much rice aroni going on in the White House, y'all. I don't know what's going on with that, but there's been a lot of rice coming in and out of that White House lately. I don't know what that's. What was Condoleezza Rice doing in the White House? Do you know? Oh well, she was trying to offer up some advice, and you know, she was looking for a possible, you know, place that she could fit in and everything. But uh, Jared might say no. Yeah, Jared's going to tell you. Jared's going to say no because he doesn't want her in. There, okay. Oh, folks, we got to be careful here. I understand, but I hope President, you know, Trump can say you're fired to family. That's that's the problem that we face. Is that that you know he's not just anybody; he's family now to him, and that is that's an ethical dilemma. And he shouldn't put himself in that position 
to be having an ethical dilemma, which is not that wise. But I understand that you want people you know and trust around you. I get that. Um, but it does create an ethical dilemma when you don't see eye to eye or when you're pushing things that are not necessarily um, – well, like Kent said, has their own agenda. But so what I wanted to do was just kind of um, mention that, um, well, what about the auditing of the Fed? Ben Carson, you want to talk about what Ben Carson found? Wow. He found a half a billion dollars in fraud. In HUD. In HUD. Yeah. What the story behind that is, that's where Obama stashed money at so he could buy um, weapons for ISIS. He was using HUD. And that's where all that extra money was being hit at. And ben Carson found it. So is he still being held as Obama? There was a reports that he was arrested and is being held. Uh, Trump had him arrested. Is this what's going on with that? Well, yeah, he's still being held. But you have to understand they've only got Obama number four in there. There's Obama number five and Obama number six out there. They're still in the French Polynesian Islands. Oh, man, the world we live in. What a world we live in, people. This is crazy. And, of course, the president's weekly address, he was talking about how confidence is increasing regarding safety, security, and jobs and all this. And the problem is, you know, Zero Hedge is reporting that this bubble is going to be, you know, ultimately going to be uh, bursting sometime soon. And, and um, I think this is part of the global currency reset. So is that also, is that why the banks are going to close too? Yeah, Is exactly. That gonna happen? Or there's, yeah, there's yeah, reports yeah, that they'll yeah. close, the banks will close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. See what's going to happen. See the the stock market and everything set up, folks, is set up under a cabal system. Okay, that's going to be going away. Okay, all this is going to be going away. We're going to be moving. We're going to be moving to a whole different type of trading platform, and all of this is going away. Okay. And yes, the stock market's going to tank. Yes, everything else is going to tank. But you know what? There's those of us that are the currency holders. We're there. We're if they go ahead and cash us, if they cash us out, we're ready to step in and help. We are not going to leave you folks left out in the cold. There's too many of us out there that have currencies, and we're ready to come in the minute that this happens. You all know that. Well, and the, the thing is that, you know, this is the, we have to welcome in a new age. We have to do it ourselves. Um, and I don't know what kind of disclosure, you know, that they're planning on doing. Um, there was a report that it's imminent, really, that there's going to be ET disclosure. I mean, look, folks, you know, we had Roswell. It's covered up because we got technology from it. And some people wanted to have that, you know, that competitive advantage, the, market advantage or the national advantage over having that technology. Um, I heard some of the technology was, I heard that when, um, I read a report recently that, that when Eisenhower, President Eisenhower made that deal with the, um, I don't know who the Zetas or somebody who came here. Council um, of Five. Yeah, he made that deal to allow, um, allow the species to abduct people here for genetic um, experimentations because they went so far beyond in their own, you know, with their genetic um, uh, experimentation that they, they modify, they're, they're all GMOs and they modified themselves out of reproduction. So they can't even reproduce. So they've tried to kind of, so they made the deal. They came here and talked to Eisenhower. This is the story. Okay, so I don't have any firsthand knowledge of this, just the story that Eisenhower made the deal with them to allow um, to al allow certain uh, abductions that they would be, that he, they assured Eisenhower these people would have no memory of it, but people have had memories of them. Um, also, they took cows, they took the reproductive organs um, for uh, the same, exper you know, uh, scientific experimentation, but it really... You know, it sold out humanity because it was supposed to be an exchange for this technology. And when we got it, we had, there was no, there were no operator manuals, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. I mean, they, so they said, okay, well, just exactly what you said. They gave them the technology. They, the problem was the government wasn't smart enough to say, show us how to use it. That was not in the agreement. 
Now, he had that, no idea how advanced the Salian race was. Absolutely not. And before they did make an agreement with the dark that are on here, the Council of Five tried to sign a galactic agreement that were of the light. And Eisenhower said that he didn't want no part of them. And then the next time, when he made a deal, he made the deal with the devil and his fallen angels himself. Okay? Well, I mean, in his defense, he probably didn't know what else to do. I mean, I don't, I don't think he meant to sell out humanity. I don't think he made, meant to make that bad decision. I think they didn't know what they were dealing with. And, you know. Well, Eisenhower should have stayed a general then because he, he sure wasn't a good president. He had the chance. He had the chance to help humanity. And he turned his back and made the comment, how in the world will I explain this to the American people? That's what he was worried about. How is he going to explain this to the American people? Not that it was for the better of the people. Not that, you know, this was going to happen. He was worried about how am I going to explain this to the people? Well, what an idiot you are. Well, so, folks, this is, you know, these are a matter of record for historical information. It's not like, you know, you know, we're Yeah, I mean, it's not like, it's like you go dig him up, you know, go and just shake him and go, where didn't you tell us that before? You know, I mean, I too late now, folks, you know, I mean, so we're getting disclosure. Yeah, well, you Nobody know, his great-granddaughter, Laura Eisenhower, is out there talking about it, too. So it's, um, you know, it's it's time for us to kind of get the facts on all of that and, you know, a uh, mankind can handle it, you know. The humans can handle. Yeah, I mean, you I mean, know, if you look on Gaia, if you look on Gaia TV or Disclosure TV, yeah, you'll see pictures of Adolf Hitler meeting with the aliens and shaking hands in 1939, folks. Yeah, yeah. So, so look, folks, we're pretty much at the end. This is the kind of thing we have to do more <laughs> research, do some more research, and just kind of tell your family and friends because, um, you know, I think it's coming. Um, I could be wrong. But I think it's coming. I think it's imminent. And I think we need to start understanding, um, you know, how all these things are working together. And they all they are all working together. I also wanted to just screen share really quick um, our friend Koala Paley's website here, his blog, I should say. And he's done an incredible um, um story here on uh, the reverse speech of Donald Trump talking about Syria. And if anybody wants some more information, go to his website, his blog rather, um, at koilapele.wordpress.com. Uh, and you can um, check out the reverse speech that he did. And it was very revealing. I mean, it's all kind of coded and you have to kind of try to figure it out. And I think KP gives his own um, interpretation of what this is all about. Um, and uh, it really does look like um, that there is definitely, according to this, um, you know, they're trying to take out Assad, basically, remove him so they can access those portals or whatever. Although KP's not saying that part of it in here, but he is saying that there's some, some reverse speech. I think, you know, it clearly shows, because I said, he doesn't look like himself. Trump doesn't look like himself. He hasn't looked... Um, he looks like something happened and it looks like, you know, this black, perhaps with the, it is blackmail, perhaps it is because um, he definitely has looked uh, almost like he aged 10 years in like a matter of a couple of days. And it just seems like something, something big came, came um, across him and has affected him. So you could think about that for a little while <laughs> and figure out what that might mean. Um, Kent, I think we've kind of covered the big things as we always do. There's always little things or other things, not necessarily insignificant, but we can't, you know, I think we covered all the big items of the week, especially the Syria. And what do you have to say to people about Syria? Do you think we're going to go into World War III, Kent? Is this, is this what people are afraid of? Well, here, here's the thing about it, folks. If there is going to be World War III, it's going to be over around Syria, Israel, and what's going to bring it, what's going to bring the war, what's going to bring the war is the Antichrist, okay? Nobody wants to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it. And if nobody likes it, you can just turn down the sound because I'm going to talk about it anyway, okay. all right? Okay. Now I'm going to screen share, too, while you're talking, okay? All right. I'm BP first watch. Yeah, I'm going to screen right. share BP. Go ahead. Okay. 
VP Earthwatch is on there. He told us the Antichrist is in the United States. He is working in government. It is not the President of the United States. He will not say on camera who it is. But we have dropped enough hints to you today. You can figure this out. And you can go to his, uh, here it is, BP Earthwatch. You can go to his uh, site and here he's talking about it. And he's extremely concerned, wants to warn people. Um, here is, I think, his initial one, uh, his initial report about it, which obviously Mark is titled 666. And he was quite um, shaken. And you can tell in this video that he was quite shaken in his video. Um, the Antichrist has appeared. Uh, BP does um, um, seem, uh, ups, you know, noticeably shaken. He's concerned about his safety. He said this information came to him from non-human sources. That could be anything, really. That could be either an ET or it could be from the creator himself. So, um, right? I mean, what would you say about that, Kent? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, his words are from the creator himself. But here's what I want you yeah. all to know. If, if there's, I got to throw this in. Okay. Okay. The atom bomb that went off down in Antarctica was not an accident, folks. When the fallen angels came down to the earth and they were entombed, listen to me, entombed, when they busted that ice down there, this was the beginning of letting those fallen angels out. How many fallen angels are down there entombed? I will tell you now, 200. This is why the Antichrist is starting to come to life. Because his fallen angels have been unearthed, okay? This is the hell that we're in for. So y'all get ready. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you what's coming. Um, I th I heard that some were good, and well, some of these fallen, well, if the fallen angels, I don't know if they could be good, but I heard some of these had, I don't know, some were less evil than the others. Is that possible? I'm laughing because it's like you know, look. Well, you know, it's I'm like having, it's I'm like having, you know, it, I mean, it's like having a beer. Is it is it less calories or is it less filling? You know, I mean. It's still a bear, folks. Okay. They're fallen angels. It doesn't matter if they're if one's a little bit nice, a little bit not as mean as the other one is mean. Okay. That's okay. Fallen angels, folks. All right, Kent. But you know what? This is according to the scriptures. This is this is when uh, the second coming of Christ is supposed to happen. Okay. So Christ is supposed to be coming back. Yeshua. Jesus is supposed. To, this is his fight, folks. I don't think this is our fight. This is his fight. This is what. This is what. The Bible says that it, this is this is a fight between Jesus and and the Antichrist. It's not it's not our fight. I don't think it's anything we have to worry about. We just have to be good with ourselves and make sure that um, you know we're we're trying to be uh, good souls. That's all. I mean, you never have to worry if you just do the right thing. You really don't. If you just do the right thing. You have nothing to worry about. You don't have to look over the back of your shoulder. You don't have to work. What wonder, you know, what lie is going to come back to haunt you at some point? It's just, it's a free, it's a freedom. It's a free, it's a way to live a free life by staying in truth and staying, you know, in light and, you know, not giving into the temptation of greed and, and uh, undercutting people, like doing things wrong. You know, I'm not perfect, um, but, you know, I, I, I'm sure I have less regrets than some. <laughs> well, I mean, I ain't perfect either. You know, I do, I, know. Things, I do things wrong every day, but you know what? I mean, it ain't nothing. I don't do anything that, you know, I don't mind saying, hey, you know what, folks? Look, this is what I did. This is how I messed up, and I'm not going to do it again. You know, yeah. I'm man enough to stand up and say, hey, you know what? I messed up. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way I feel about it. But I, I, you know what? I'm not sleeping with kids. I'm not murdering people. I'm not, you know, out ripping off purses of little old ladies and everything else. You okay. know, I mean, so you know, be kind to other people. Yeah. Be kind to other people. Open a door for somebody. Pull out a chair. If somebody, it's coming. It's going to be coming hot. Okay. If you see somebody and they're hot, 
and you buy you a water, buy them a water. Be kind to your fellow man. Every time the UPS, the, I feel so bad in the summertime when it's really hot, and the UPS man has to come to my house like several times, and I always offer him some ice cream. Like I always have like ice cream sandwiches or ice cream pops or something in sure. my, my freezer. I feel so bad for these guys. And they're working in this heat, and they don't seem to have air conditioned trucks, and it's well, it is tough for them. I know. Imagine these old boys running around UPS down here in Georgia. I mean, we're a hundred plus degrees in the summertime. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't believe, tough. you know, you wouldn't believe how many times I went out, you know, if I know I got a package coming and everything, and I've asked him, I said, hey, old buddy, would you like cold, would you like a cold bottle of water, you know, to take with you? And he's like, sometimes they'll say yeah, and sometimes they'll say no, I got some, you know. But yeah. I mean, you know, you know it, you know it doesn't hurt to ask, and it doesn't hurt to be kind to people. It really yeah. doesn't. No, it's, you know, it's just so freeing. I mean, joyful and, you know, you have to choose the life you want. So anyway, you know, we're all trying to do that. We're all doing the best we can. Um, and again, I think that really this, this uh, battle is between, um, this battle of the dark and light is between the Antichrist comes. It's, it's a battle for Jesus to handle, uh, for Yeshua, Christ, uh, whoever, whatever name you want to give him. Um, and, uh, you know, we just have to, to, you know, do right by our our fellow humans so that's it kent that's it for this week's potus i mean it's kind of <laughs> heated quite heated here we want to direct our our viewers to go to bp earth watch and check out his videos um you could also go i think they're posted as well on um our goldfish report facebook page which is a a research uh news page it's it's for research uh purposes and by the way i want to tell you that picture the picture of the dog that lovely dog, the best smile, the one we gave the award for the best smile, that had the most views of every post on the page. <laughs> People love their doggers. Oh. They love their doggies. The people love their dogs, let me tell you. And I love the dogs, too. And we have to love our animals as well, don't we? Yeah, we sure do. So, you know, if you guys find some funny animal videos, like where the animal's not hurt, you know, send them to us and we might post them because we love animals too. And we want to share that with everybody. And I just love that dog. I just love that dog. He's just the cutest <laughs> little dog in the world. So, and one day we're going to have big daddy come join us. He was quiet today though, Kent. Why do you think he's so quiet? He was just happy. We were talking about everything, wasn't he? Well, yeah, that, and we got four hens on the nest and he's sitting there walking up and down the he's up there walking up and down the pen making sure they stay on that nest he's doing his job exactly <laughs> you know what this is late in the day for us though this isn't even sunday we're doing this saturday and we're doing right. this late saturday afternoon which is uh which is unusual for us we usually do this so he's usually got more to say in the morning yeah yeah well you know <laughs> you know we have to squeeze in the report when we can squeeze it in folks you know yeah, uh, you know Luis is going to be busy tomorrow. I'm going to be busy tomorrow. You know, I was busy today, but you know, I, we, we set it up to where we could come in and do the report for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, you know, but it's springtime and it's springtime folks. I mean, everybody's gardening and they're taking care of their animals and fixing pens and they're fixing their houses and everything else, you know, and everybody's just busy. And in the South, we all kind of work with each other around here. You know, we get, you get two or three buddies together. Well, this buddy's house has got some stuff wrong with it. Well, we go over there and we work on his house. And then maybe the next week we go over to the next buddy's house and we work on his house. You know, I think we shoot more bull than we, you know, than we do anything else, but we get the job. done. You know what I'm saying? But this is working together. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. I think humans know what to do naturally. As long as as long as you don't give in to greed and selfishness, humans know what to do. It's it's in our DNA. We know what to do. We know how to work together. We know how to be loving. We know how to support each other, um, protect each other. In these catastrophes, these events that we have, like these big hurricanes and tornadoes, every damn community comes together. They know what to do. Nobody has to tell them what to do. Nobody needs FEMA to come in there and tell everybody what to do, although it's good to have somebody there who um, can uh, be a go-to person to kind of help uh, coordinate things if it's for positive. But um, there's a report that these FEMA camps are going to be used pretty soon for the mass arrest of all these uh, pedophiles. Is, is oh, and it's already going on right now. Yeah. 
Now, we could talk forever. We should save this for our next report, though. Okay. Our viewers are our viewers have been hanging on for a while now and we can just keep going because what happens we'll keep talking afterwards and we'll figure this out we'll just figure out what we're going to talk about next time so so folks thanks so much for viewing again please um you know uh if you want to support uh, the goldfish report go to the uh, www.thegoldfishreport.com um again i'm a, i'm a volunteer i don't get paid for any of this um but it does help to uh um uh, it provides support for our equipment and, uh, um, you know, for producing uh, all the, the reports. Um, so we do appreciate that. And, we, you know, and we also appreciate, it's like a team effort. I mean, this Goldfish Report's not happening without you uh, because it's for you. And I want everyone to feel like they're part of it because it's for you. And I'm not, you know, I think uh, everybody should feel like they help to contribute to this. And you can start right now. You can start right now. Send us a link. Send us a story. Send us a donation. Whatever you like to do, you'll be part of it one way or the other. You can help make Goldfish Report, um, you know, uh, be what, uh, what it's meant to be and uh, to be a research resource for people, for truth, for uh, – for information and um and who knows we're going to grow together and that that's what's nice about it so kent it's been fun today yes ma'am and uh, we will Enjoy catch it. up we'll see what happens it's going to be a roller coaster this week i have a feeling it's going to be very interesting because we have easter next weekend and there's lots of things uh how interesting timing that this uh antichrist was um announced a week before easter which is this is the period of um of uh, sacrifice right now. And um, so we'll see what happens. It's going to be very interesting and uh, just sit tight folks and wait for our next report. And, um, and we thank you for viewing. And this concludes this edition of the goldfish report. Um, well, do you think maybe there's agenda behind that? Um, it's, it's a little bit freaky. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, especially as a as a Jew, if he was a real Jew, would he really buy a six 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 building? I, mean, I don't know. I don't think so. He says, his, you know, the report did say that his family came. You know, his grandparents were survivors of the Holocaust. Um, that's that's what he claims. Um, and he, you know, has a big family. Um, I I don't know. I just think that you know, this is a person who, if he's an advisor, what kind of official role? And and I think there's a lot of people out there questioning this. Um, and I'm just kind of you know, trying to take the, um, so to speak, uh, you know, take the temperature so of all these people. And they're all kind of concerned, you know, it's running a little high <laughs> in terms of the, the, the temperature of the, you know, it's like, it's, it's going in fever pitch because, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, questions. Um, and, and, Quite honestly, I mean, he's getting access to top world leaders. I'm going to screen share um, our Goldfish Report news page. Um, and here's a photo. It's a really lovely photo, though. We have Ivanka and we have uh, Jared and we have their ch two of their children here reciting uh, traditional Chinese poems and songs for um, uh, Xi Jinping and, uh, and his wife. Um, and it's really beautiful. Uh, but here he has access, and so does Ivanka, to top world leaders. He also, Trump also requested uh, what presidential, um, let's see, what is it, security briefings are um, in, intelligence briefings are only for certain individuals within the president's um, uh, cabinet. Isn't that right, Kent? Right. The executive, the executive branch, yes. Okay, so there's only certain individuals that usually get or who are privy to that intelligence briefing. And he's requested that Jared be in on that as well. Folks, this, you know, I, I don't, I'm not against, you know, that I'm not against um, the president. Um, and I, you know, I'm not singing Kumbaya either. I mean, we're here to hold his feet to the fire, um, keep him um, to his word. Um, which we have a little issue about. I'm going to show you in a minute. But this is a, this is troubling to see that these people have this access to world leaders who are not uh, in you know they are not political people. They are not part of the. They are not public servants. Um, they haven't been public. They they're not bureaucrats. Um, they haven't spent a lifetime. It's like there's people who have been spent lifetime in public service who would love to have the opportunity to be there and who aren't there. So um, I understand this. This is they have access, but should they? That's the question I have. Should they? And um, 
it's it's it just seems like at a point where our country really is there's a lot of people suffering there's a lot of corruption there's a lot of that i don't think we should really be you know um taking advantage of those kinds of opportunities because there is um an appearance of impropriety what do you think about that kent oh yeah definitely i mean there's there's you know this does not this does not look good i mean I mean, this is no better than, you know, I'll tell you what, this, this is starting to look, this is starting to look like Barnum and Bailey's again. You know, I mean, this is, a listen, if Obama 2.0, I mean, let's not let it get to that area, folks, I'm telling you. Wow. Right. Well, you know, um, not to overshadow uh, the fact that, um, well, here, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm going to screen share this other thing is when we say we want to hold his feet to the fire, we do have to kind of bring up some important issues and why he, you know, and publicly has kind of done a 180 on Syria. And what we see here is this is, of course, on our Goldfish Report Facebook page. Um, here we have all of his tweets talking about a bombing of Syria of debt long term needs congressional approval in that one in that tweet this one is doesn't have our national interest at heart stay out of syria trump is tweeting this himself um uh not uh do not attack syria if you do many bad things will happen these are trump's own tweets this is a problem people this is a problem see here's what the big if y'all want to know what what the big deal is about syria all right I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The portals that lead to the future and into space are over in Syria. Okay? You all need to know that. They are over there. They are guarding them portals because there's things coming to this earth that you folks don't know nothing about. And they're coming through them portals that are in Syria right now. And if that's the reason why the United States has 10,000 troops on the ground in Syria blocking them portals, watching what comes out of them portals. Because, folks, what's coming through them portals ain't good, okay? You have to understand, we live in a magical world that we have been told nothing about, okay? Mm. This world is not what you think it is. Okay? The earth is not what you think it is. The moon's not what you think it is. But all this is going to be, this is all going to be part of disclosure. Just before we get off, um, before we forget about this, we do want to say and, and, and acknowledge that um, Supreme Court, uh, well, Neil Gorsuch was confirmed to the Supreme Court. Here's a, a photo, um, and here's a story about his confirmation. Um, sorry to just change subjects about that, but it was part of our report today, and since we came, uh, uh, came upon it, it was a good time to just mention that. Um, um, but yeah, Kent, um, you know, the Bible does talk about, um, you know, these kind of, it's almost like coded, it's like coded messages. And here we have uh, Snowden talking about um, UFO events will leave you speechless. So he's talking about things that may be coming. Um, this has never happened till now. So folks, please go to our Goldfish Report Facebook page and check out these stories that we have here um, that are go into much more detail than what we're talking about. Um, Trey Gowdy is definitely, um, you know, wants to prosecute Hillary Clinton, get her in, in jail. Um, we, little by little, we're noticing how when President Trump is, you know, um, he put this group of advisors together and, you know, I think what happened was, you know, Jared um, did not like Governor Christine held a grudge for him uh, going after his father. Um, and this is what was reported. I'm not telling you this firsthand. I don't have firsthand knowledge of this. I'm really kind of re re retelling a report that I had read or in and heard uh, in a video regarding uh jared kushner and so and so it seems like there has been this payback there has been this you know venging of you know it's like but if your father committed a crime you know why are you avenge it's like you know why are you avenging some we were supposed to you know 
prosecute people who commit crimes. That's the way it's supposed to work here. But, you know, when you're up in the upper echelon of billionaire, it kind of, you know, you feel so disconnected and so, you know, I guess beyond reproach, I suppose, you know, like the laws don't apply to people over a certain um, salary number. Is that, is that um, what you're, t what you're talking about with the. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you got people that are billionaires, listen, I talk to bankers. I talk to people that have money. You know, and the difference between a millionaire doing what he does is one thing, but a billionaire, people like Trump and Kushner and all the rest and uh, rest of them folks, they have to walk that red line of right and wrong. And they have to stay on that red line because they've got all this money and, you know, they can be a boy genius today, but if they lose that money, you know, they're a blithering idiot the next day. So they have, they always have to walk that red line of right and wrong. So it looks like um, Kushner was instrumental in making sure Christie was not part of the, um, um, the Trump cabinet. Um, also, uh, it seems like since he was there, he also did not like um, Stephen Bannon, the chief strategist that uh, Trump had put in and got rid of him as well. It seems like, um, you know, uh, because it's family, that's where the conflict of interest comes in. And that's why you can't, you know, I mean, Trump is, you know, really the, I mean, he's the king of the apprentice, you know what I mean? He, he, he's the one who made your fired, you know, a famous term uh, in that regard in a popular way. And, but can he say that to his son-in-law? That's why you shouldn't have relatives working in places like that. If it came to that, can he do it? If he needed to, could he do it? That's why it's a bad idea to have family working as, in the office with the, with the president at that level. It's a bad idea because um, you have to still be able to say you're fired. And what had happened was uh, it looks like Kushner had brokered some deal uh, to, for a meeting between the president of Mexico and President Trump, which President Trump ended up canceling, and apparently, and this is just a report, so I don't know this firsthand, but apparently Kushner was furious with Trump, and it seems like um, there might be some, uh, uh, you know, issues that may come about this. This is why we can't, you know, have the, you know, it, it's it's one thing if we don't, we don't even know what this person's agenda is, and that's a concern. Um, and Ivanka herself, I mean, they may be well-intended, but we need to know, you know, as anybody else would be vetted for the job, American people should, if they really want to talk about transparency, American people should know what their, what their goal is and what their objectives are, and they should make that public. What do you think, Kent? Right. I totally agree with that. But you have to understand, the president's executive staff is there at the leisure of the president. In other words, he can hire you for one day and he can fire you tomorrow if he wants to. He has that right to do that. But you're all going to have to keep an eye on Jared uh, Kirshner, okay? You're going to keep an eye. Now, listen. Now, I'm giving you all a hint here. Wake up. Keep an eye on him. He's Jewish. He's around 35 years old, and he has an agenda. All right? You all three, you all remember them three things. He's Jewish, he's 35 years old, and he has an agenda. All right, now we're not just singling him out because he's Jewish. There's other aspects here. I mean, we're not anti-Semites. Um, my closest friend is Jewish. My best friends in life have been Jewish. Because Italians and Jews have always lived close in community together. <laughs> and so this is not about, you know, being an anti-Semite whatsoever okay Absolutely it's, it's about not. a combination i mean gary larrabee was on with us last time talking about the fake jews the kazarians versus the real jews so there is a separation there is some deception going on here so even and in fact i saw a report where there were these orthodox jews in in um in brooklyn protesting um this whole concept, once they start to realize that the fake Jews are the Khazarian Jews, it was never covered in the media. Completely blacked out. Of course, because, because the Cabal are nothing but the Khazarians. They are the false Jews. They are not real Jews. 
period. They are from Khazaria. And the history behind that is when the Khazarian Empire started, they were people of mercenaries. They were rented out to other countries to fight wars for other kings. Not just, not for their country, but for other countries, okay? And they made their self over into the Middle East and over into uh, Egypt and over there, and that's where they got themselves all set up. But listen, folks, these, these Khazarians are the fake Jews. And this is what I'm trying, this is what I'm trying to get you all to understand. It's not that I'm against the Jewish people. I'm trying to show you that the Khazarians are not Jewish. And you, the three things that I told you about, y'all keep that in mind. Now, what does that remind you of? And Gary Larrabee was on last week talking about it. Right. Um, so, I, I, mean, I think what's a little bit concerning is that one of the buildings he purchased in New York City, we're talking about Kushner, is 666 building on Fifth Avenue. I mean, who, right. would, who would want to, he supposedly paid the most money for um, that building. That was the most money paid for a building in New York City when he purchased it. And, you know, but what y'all don't know is he warned them ahead of time that he was going to be bombing that airfield. Now, it was an empty airfield, okay? So Russia had time to move their stuff and everything, and we bombed an empty airfield because, like, you know, like they said, you know, you can't let gassing uh, innocent civilians go. You know, you got to do something about this, you know. And what did he do? He took out an airbase. You know, what's the next step going to be? Well, I don't know what the next step's going to be because the next step ain't been moved yet. You know, ain't nobody made that move yet. But if it does, you know, I'm pretty sure they're going to start losing some stuff. So, you know, a bunch of this, look, folks, this is just, this is just a big thing to take your mind off of what the real, you know, question is. And what's the real question? Well, I know what it is. Well, what can let's talk about that a little bit because it, it seems like um, you know, there's an awful lot of reports that I've been reading, um, and I think you know we've discussed this about the new republic being announced and that there needs to be, um, and of course this um, global currency reset and there needs to be some kind of distraction, so to speak, from. Uh, all that going on that, that um, there's big changes coming and most people don't see it and this might be just a, a play at hand you know of cards here so to speak to um, to set the stage for really kind of in a strange way ushering in a very positive change but, but a change that might be a little bit shocking for people and maybe um, you know have to it kind of almost had to happen this way do you see you know what I'm getting at Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're getting at. I mean, you know, if you think Xi Jinping came over here just to have uh, dinner with Trump, you know, he also brought along the uh, the uh, royal, he, the, well, the Chinese dragon's accountants came with him, okay? And he brought over the republic and, you know, to give the okay, to give the republic back to the people of the United States, you know, to bring in the algorithm for the gold to be given out, you know, to give the okay to release the U new United States notes. See, folks, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes y'all don't know, okay? And what they're doing is they're trying to distract you so they can get all this done, okay? And you all need to know this. It does seem like the dog and pony show, though. I mean, because most of business gets done without the watchful eyes of the public. And so we just get to see the dog and pony show. Um, and you mentioned something about um, Xi Jinping, who uh, has been here. Uh, there was obviously um, some explosion not far from Mar-a-Lago right before he arrived. Was that sending, who was that really? Or do you know if that was just a coincidence or was that someone trying to send a message, trying to stop this or thwart this um, rollout? Oh, oh, you're talking about when they blew up all the apple trucks? Right, that the apples spontaneously <laughs> combusted. 
<laughs> is that what happened? The apples spontaneously combusted? <laughs> Listen, folks, apples don't spontaneously combust, okay? What that, what that was, that was the dark government. What that was was the dark government trying to disrupt the meeting. They thought they were going to disrupt the meeting. They didn't get to do it, okay? So what they did, they sent in people, and they blew up the Apple factory, which was just up the road where Trump was going to be going into mar lago and, you know, where Xi Jinping would be going into, and they thought they could cause some disruption, you know? You're not going to stop this, okay? They want to stop this so bad. They all want to stop this, but you're not going to stop it, folks. You might as well just get used to it. It's coming, okay? We're, going to, we're having a new world, a new set of government coming in, and no matter how bad the cabal want it stopped, it's not going to stop. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting timing because um, this new world and all of a sudden we have people talking on the Internet about, you know, suddenly the arrival of the Antichrist is here. But we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, what I wanted to ask you about was there was some uh, another report about um, Xi Jinping and his um, uh, entourage uh, has actually gone to um, Alaska to review some uh, natural resources there. Yeah, natural gas sources in uh, Alaska, and that's part of the uh, that's part of the agreement to China. So you know this could okay. be this. So this is like asset recuperation for the bankruptcy of the USA Corporation. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, because. Uh, when the Republic is announced, if in fact, you know, I don't really, I haven't seen any of these documents myself, but, um, you know, this is what, these are what the reports are. If the Republic is rolled out, then, um, then the United States of America, the Republic, does not have that or does not own that debt any longer. That debt, that our national debt is zeroed out because the debt was accrued under the corporation, which most people didn't know anything about. When the Pope came over, um, he appointed, this is what the theory is, I don't know this for sure, but, you know, can't you comment on this? He appointed Paul Ryan to take over uh, because the Pope no longer uh, held us in, um, uh, as collateral for the debt. Is that, cor is that correct? The, 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 the people have been, by virtue of our birth certificates, been collateralized because of this right. debt that we owed, okay? So, yeah, right. nobody knew this. Um, you know, and of course, the Trading with the Enemy Act and the um, Glass-Steagall Act of 1970 or 1933. Um, if you do some research on that, you could you could find it in there. Um, so what you're saying, so so Kent, what what is this? Um, so what we have is some evidence. Why did the Pope come over? So the Pope had a few things to do when he came over, and now the consequences of now the latter part of that is coming to fruition now you're saying trump's going to be resigning soon that paul ryan's going to take over can you go into that in more detail well trump will be resigning at the end of the, this month out of, out of a scandal um do you want me to tell what the scandal is well i mean he you know honestly i mean acting without congress is kind of you know hi everyone welcome to the goldfish report this is our weekly Drain the Swamp POTUS update with Kent Dunn. And uh, we have Kent with us. How are you, Kent? Oh, doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You know, I've got my cappuccino here as usual. It just keeps me going through the report. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, I got I got my cup of coffee. I'm, I'm good to go, you know. Hey, let's do it. There you go. I wanted to first give a little shout out to some Facebook viewers that uh, we didn't mention last week because they um, they have linked me up on um, my personal page. So, um, and I, I usually don't use that when I'm doing my goldfish report, but I wanted to give a shout out to one of, you know, Really, we have so many wonderful viewers, um, but Christopher from Brooklyn, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Christopher, for all your wonderful posts that you um, that you sent to me. We have Vid over in Slovenia, who's always sending us stuff on chemtrails. We have people all over the world. We have our friend Luke in Bulgaria, who sends us things, um, messages. We have Ada. I don't know where she is, but you, she sends us um, messages as well, uh, links. Um, 
we have Paul, bless your heart. Um, of course, Suzanne and James, bless your heart for your lovely posts and your lovely messages. Rose, um, Barbara, Dawn, and of course, our, our blogger friend, Kwila Pele, who um, is really uh, one of the stories that we're going to talk about today is um, the obviously the Syria bombing. And Kwila Pele, we're going to feature one of his um videos uh he did some reverse speech analysis of um the president's speech and we have a lot to talk about so um uh i wanted to give a shout out to our viewers and i wanted to thank you so much and again thank to our supporters for um helping support the goldfish report and uh one other message before we leave this topic of um viewers is um, we do appreciate and we know that our, our viewers love making comments in our comment section of our videos and um, and it's there for you because we do this for you and we know that you like to make your comments and comment we hope that you comment more on the topics being discussed <laughs> really what goldfish report is about goldfish report is really about having a conversation about it and we may not always you know we, we might not always have the facts 100 percent we're researchers so we're fine we're looking for it like you are are. Um, but what we're doing is having a conversation about it and talking about how we're reacting to it, how if, you know, the probability of it is how it's going to impact our life and, and if it's and if it's something that we need to change. And so it's worth having the conversation about. So I just wanted to remind our viewers to be respectful in our comments section um, and not to monopolize it either because that's, you know, not letting everybody have their um, um, point of view. But let me just say one last thing. Um, you know, Kent is entitled to his opinion about, he has his own personal views, and, and I'm certainly entitled to mine. And I, just so that viewers are aware, I do have a multi-ethnic um, family. And so to try to come on to our, our comment section and, and try to in any way claim that Goldfish Report is racist or try to provoke the provocateurs who have come in, you're going to be deleted and, and you're going to be reported to um, to Google and you already have been. So um, take your hate out of our comment section because you're not welcome there, okay? Um, so you have been removed and you have been reported and anybody who wants to come in, and we do reserve the right to remove anybody for any reason, it's our site. Um, but we welcome, you know, certainly dialogue about the topics we talk about. But attacking other people is, is a waste of time because everyone can have their own opinion. And you don't need to, you know, show somebody where they're wrong, it, you know, over and over and over again. I mean, you know, it, that's not the point of the comment section. It's to comment on the topics being discussed and how they impact you and not to show other people that you're right and that you have something to prove. Um, and the 99% of the people who comment on our videos are just the most loving, wonderful people. And I'm keeping it up for you. And there's like this, all of a sudden, a few stragglers who have come in to cause trouble and to start um, start uh, trying to dominate. But we are watching it very carefully, and you're not going to get away with it. So please be respectful, or because um, uh, just the people who are truly interested in the topics we're discussing um, to benefit humanity are welcome to post in our in our comment section. So Kent, I know you've had to go in there. And you've had to uh, clean up a few things. Did you have any comments you wanted to make about the comment section? Because it is part of our reports. Oh, you know, I don't. You know what? Being from the South and everything, you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, people, they take the wrong idea of what, what people from the South are really like. You know, they, they think we're all, we think, they think we're all <laughs> racist and, you know, we're, uh, you know, tobacco chewing and all this other stuff, which is the farthest thing from the truth. I mean, my best friend is black, you know, we call him Bubba, you know, Bubba's real name is Buddy. Okay. His real name is Buddy. And I was telling him, I was telling him about one of the comments that was made on there. He said, well, maybe they need to just come down here and work with us for a day and see, see if color really matters at the end of the day. I said, boy, you got that right. Well, and it doesn't. I mean, you know, we're all beautiful souls, whatever color you are. I mean, I was a makeup artist, and I can tell you how much I love skin and different colors of skin and how amazing it was for me to learn um, and just, you know, to appreciate um, all the variety that humanity is, and we love everybody. Um, well, actually, we don't have to love everybody. We don't love all the people that come in, and we don't love the provocateurs. I don't have to love everybody, so I love most people. <laughs> All right, Kent, how's that? Yeah, 
That sounds good to me. Now, we got recording today because Big Daddy was pushing us along. He really wanted to get Goldfish Report started because you and I were chit-chatting for a few minutes before we got started. So um, hopefully he's happy staying quiet. Um, well, let's get started. I mean, obviously the big news, and sorry to you know belabor getting to this, folks, but we had to make those um, announcements up front, um, is obviously this um, attack on Syria, and this is really significant. We have Russia responding. We have, you know what, though, Ken, I'll be honest, it almost seems like, um, you know, the world's a stage and everyone's playing a role, so to speak. It almost seems kind of like something doesn't seem right with this. Do you want to tell us what you, what do you know about this? Well, you know, Here's what it was, okay? Trump was there with Xi Jinping from China down at the Southern White House down in Mar Largo, Florida, okay? And I guess I guess for some reason he had to show off for some constitutional and perhaps illegal, even if you know Xi Jinping is here and you know he didn't we weren't we weren't personally threatened. We shouldn't have gone to war. Uh, that that might be part of it, but you go ahead. All right. I'll tell you exactly why. I'll tell you exactly why Trump uh, went over there and launched the CIA and the dark government has claimed. Okay, I I don't know anything about it, but this is what my intel sources are telling me that they have Trump on picture having sex with a thirteen year old girl. Okay, and Trump was to either do this attack or they was going to release it to the public. So y'all take it from there. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it seems hey, like, I'm just, it seems like exactly. whole, but but it seems like this whole pedophile thing is every single, you know, it was deliberately set up to blackmail every single leader into somebody's ultimate agenda. It's very concerning. All of this is very concerning. Well, you know, Jeffrey Epstein's island was, you know, had cameras over there set up by the Mossad. They got everybody over there. Anybody that visited that island, they, they, they either drug, put drugs into them or they drugged their drink and, to get them knocked out. And then they had them young girls, you know, going into their room and, you know, uh, having nude photos with them. And they'd strip them down, you know, either nude or down to their bloomers or whatever, you know. And then they took these pictures and they had all of this evidence on tape. And this is why the Israeli must side has been blackmailing the United States government because everybody's been over on that island. Well, shame on them for going. Shame on them for going. They know well, what's going on there. Well, listen, here's the thing about I wouldn't okay? be anywhere near can't, some place like that. I, I understand that, but if, but if they there? don't get you, you have to understand when you're dealing with politicians, you're dealing with greed, okay? I mean, you know, Rob Peter to pay Paul type thing. You know, except the problem is, is whenever you rob Peter, it, it's Peter Public is who it is, okay? Right. And Paul, you know, Paul is just the old boy that's standing on the side and saying, hey, you need to go over there and rob Peter a little bit more, you know? I mean, but hey, that that's, this is the way it works, folks. I mean, the, the rich, look, the rich think they can do everything and get away with it. And there's always somebody out there that's going to catch you. And they're going to hold it over your head. So if you don't do stuff like that, then you don't have to worry about it. Well, you know, um, I, I, as I hear you talking, it, it's, it's um, you know, it's almost as if you're talking about this next um, aspect of the story that we're going to talk about. And that's really kind of what's going on with, uh, there's a lot of reports about uh, Jared Kushner, the um, son-in-law to President Trump finding his way in really interesting positions. He was in Iraq this week. There was a report. He was escorted by uh, Dunford, I believe, General Dunford. Um, really, he's not, uh, God doesn't have a background in policy at all. He um, is a business person. Um, uh, he's uh, not somebody we know enough about. He's not a bureaucrat, so he's not a lifelong um, 
uh, public servants. So there's, it's almost like, you know, we really should know a little bit more about the agenda and the personal beliefs of the people who are surrounding and advising our president. Um, I don't really have a problem with it being a family member, but I do have a problem not knowing anything about the person if they've not been elected, they've not been appointed in a public um, confirmation hearing, or they have not been a public servant their whole life. So um, my concern is that, you know, uh, what exactly was he doing um, on behalf of the American people in this kind of uh, relationship, um, Kent? Well, I can tell you what he was doing over in Iraq, if you want to know. Trump had, Trump had 26 pallets full of dinars, okay? And they had to use a military cargo plane to load the 26 pallets of dinars up. And Kushner and General Dunford went over there and met with a body and within a four-hour period while uh, Trump's dinars was getting cashed in for the GCR, okay? And they was only there four hours, and then they had to get back on the plane, and they had to get over here so he could be around whenever Xi Jinping's people got here. So this is what the deal is about that. But the reason they went over there is because they cashed in uh, Trump's 26 pallets full of dinar. I don't... Well, the official story was that he was there surveying the, um, um, I guess the, the the borders, or they were. He was surveying the. Um, it looked like Mosul. There, there's reports that Mosul is almost completely liberated at this point, and that the country. I guess if they had their RV, their their country has been um, reassigned so, as the sovereign um, country. Is that right, Kent? Right, exactly. So their sovereignty has been restored, uh, which is really great for Iraq and the Iraqi people. Um, and, um, and, and I guess the reason why your comment, um, you know, I connected this was I had seen a report about how um, Jared Kushner's father, Charles, um, you know, was um, uh, indicted and uh, sentenced and is in prison for um, – for uh, what some some crimes some felonies, and um, and I and I think he felt he was on his way to law school, and I think he felt um, disheartened by how the prosecutors um, prosecuted his father. I mean, if it's a crime, it's a crime. People, I mean, you can't get off because you're you're you know. Unfortunately, justice is for sale in this country. I mean, that's that's what I've seen firsthand. You know, it's, it's beyond an opinion. I mean, I've seen it factually. Um, uh, it's not always this way, uh, but it it can be for sale. That that if you have the right um, group of corrupted officials, uh, unfortunately. But it seems like Governor Christie uh, from New Jersey was involved in that somehow. And 